Hey, how's it going, P-Pixel pals? This is Panic Pixel. You can call me Christine, and welcome to my very first keyboard review on the channel. Eblu was nice enough to send me one of their newer products, the K729 Multicolored LED Mechanical Keyboard. Really grateful for this opportunity, and so excited to be doing this for you guys. So, without further ado, let's get to the review. <laughs> So say hello to the K729 mechanical keyboard, which I found to be as low as 65 US dollars on eBay, but has a recommended retail price of 89.99 US dollars, which happens to be the same price as the non-RGB version of the Corsair Strafe gaming keyboard. It features blue tactile Otemu switches with clear housing, and just to be clear, it is not an RGB keyboard. Not an RGB keyboard, it is a multicolored LED keyboard. You'll be getting a sound sample of the keys as well as a showcase of the lighting effects so stay tuned for that or click on one of the annotations above to skip ahead to whatever part you want to go to. So taking a look at the box, the K729 comes in this packaging with a lot of colors going on. Unlike its more expensive competitors, eBlue has decided to put the branding on the cardboard box itself instead of a separate kind of sheet to go on top of it. It lessens the sense of premiumness of the product since it lacks more layers for protection, but hey, it does its job. Opening it up, you are greeted to the keyboard wrapped in a thin foam sheet with two foam bumpers on either side. When you shake the box, there's really no sound of anything moving about, so you can rest assured that your product will be safe during shipping, but probably not as safe as you worry warts want it to be. So when I first took the K729 out of its packaging, the first thing I noticed was the silver aluminum plate covering its plastic body. This is really what separates the K729 from its cheaper competitors with similar functions. Which by the way, I will be linking down in the description below just for your reference. The plate is a couple of millimeters thick and has been cut into a very nice geometric shape and has some cool text and other machine-like designs in some of its gaps. The overall design just screams badass and very techy. On the sides, you'll see a strip of eBlue's signature blue color that also happens to illuminate the wing-like edges of the keyboard. Same kind of blue can be found up top with the Mazer logo and down at the bottom with the Special Ops XL logo. These three parts can be put on breathing effect, turned off, and then turned back on using some keys on the keyboard. The back of the body isn't too special, it's just black plastic with an eBlue label and four relatively large pads. Also, you have two plastic feet that pop out upwards. The keyboard doesn't have much support for the wrist, making it not the ideal choice when working. Checking out the keycaps, they have the usual eBlue keyboard font on matte black plastic that is slightly contoured to your fingers. The K729 features keycaps that are raised about half a centimeter above the plate with 0.7 centimeters between each key. It's just about enough space to let the LEDs reflect through and give a sort of glow. And it also helps with the cleaning as well, so you can actually use a hair dryer because of the raised keycaps. Accessible with the function keys are the shortcuts, media controls, and various lighting effects and lighting profiles. You also have the option to lock your Windows key during play, so you don't have to access any sort of software to play with the effects or to change the lights on your keyboard. You can just do that on the keyboard itself. So here's a quick sound sample of the keys. Like any other blue switches in the market, it can get pretty loud. At the moment, the keys sound a bit more crisp than Cherry MX Blues that I've tried out at keyboard stores. Not sure if it's an Otemu thing or if it's just because the keys are new, but in any case, that's just something to think about. Now let's check out the K729's lighting effects. Keep in mind that these lighting effects come at five different speeds with four different brightness levels. When you hit the highest or the lowest of each setting, the caps lock, number lock, and scroll lock keys will flash three times, so that's when you know when we, you've hit the maximum or the minimum. Apart from those patterns, eBlue has also pre-programmed some lighting profiles for you to use, which you can access by pressing the function keys with the numbers 1 to 5. If you're not into what they have pre-programmed, you can program them yourself using the function and N key if I'm not mistaken, and you can just press whichever keys you want to light up. If you want to turn the lights off, you can just simply put your brightness at the lowest setting and you'll be fine. 
Based on what we've seen, I applaud eBlue's use of the clear housing on the Otemu switches because it makes the lights more vibrant since it allows the light to reflect off of the silver aluminum plate. Actually, one of the first concerns I had with the keyboard was the color choice for the LEDs and how they decided to put a different color on each row. I thought that looked a bit tacky and was a bit weird. I was initially turned off by it when I saw it on the packaging, but being a sucker for bright lights and patterns, when I actually saw what it was like in person, I thought it was actually pretty good. It was. It was pretty impressive. Obviously, most people would prefer to have an RGB keyboard because of all the customizations and larger amount of colors, but with a budget of less than 100, I think you could probably settle for something like this until RGB becomes more affordable for us. I do have to mention though that if you look very closely, the LEDs have a very, very, very slight flickering to them. There are certainly budget keyboards out there with smoother light transitions and better color gradients. It's really up to you whether the eBlue K729 is your cup of tea or not in terms of lighting, so I, I leave that up to you. Overall, if you're on a budget and looking for an awesome keyboard to light up your world, the eBlue K729 mechanical keyboard should be in your list of considerations. It's less than $70 if you look at the right places, it has a really nice futuristic design, really vibrant lights, and a whole variety of patterns to choose from. Although the quality of the LEDs and the lack of wrist rest are things I wish could be improved on, I don't think they're too much of a deal breaker if you're just generally looking for a keyboard to brighten up your setup with a variety of light effects on a really sleek looking product. While it's true that it can be more expensive than other budget options out there that have the same kind of functions, since it's quite new and it does include a nice aluminum plate, I feel like the price is generally quite justified. Additionally, being able to access the various effects with the function key on the K729 is pretty convenient since you don't have to access any kind of software, you don't have to wait for your computer to boot up just for you to change the patterns on your keyboard. And it's actually not too confusing once you get used to it thanks to the labels on the keyboard itself. But again, I wish that there were more support for the wrist, maybe some include a kind of wrist stress with the keyboard because I think that's pretty important as a person who types a lot and I think it generally would make the K729 a better, well-rounded keyboard. But that's just me. Anyway guys, I hope this video helped you make a better decision in your budget gaming life. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and the community and I will try our best to answer the questions to the best of our abilities. Check me out on Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Check out what shenanigans I'm up to and what I'm currently working on for the channel. Lots of interesting things there. Lots. Leave me a like if you'd like to help me get more review products on the channel. Leave me a dislike if you'd like to see me improve my quality or something. Be sure to leave a comment as well to let me know what to improve on. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I do not know what time it is right now. Do I even want to know what time it is right now? Probably not. It's like almost 4 a.m. 4 am this is how much i am dedicated to this video i just hit the microphone i'm so dedicated to this video i hit the microphone get pumped get pumped get pumped at 4 am